Today, I am going to give y'all my predictions for this Sunday's NASCAR Cup Series race at the Michigan International Raceway. This Sunday's race is going to be very exciting, and I'm also going to do a pick five contest for this Sunday's race. And if you're new to the channel and wondering, how does a pick five contest work? Well, it is pretty simple. All you're going to have to do is go down below to the comment section and type in who you think will finish any top five. If you go five for five, you get an autograph of your choice. And if you go four for five, you get an unsigned hero card. But if you win something, DM me on Twitter at WBlackwell72 or email me at WBlackwell6426 at gmail.com. And that's if you win. But also go check out Winning Bets, JB Racing News Reviews, and Righteous Redneck. But let's get started. Brian Priest, and you're watching William Blackwell on YouTube. <laughs> Before I give y'all my predictions for this Sunday's race at Michigan, I am going to have to talk about this past weekend's race at Indianapolis, the road course, if you will. But let's start from qualifying. In qualifying, we saw a ton of crazy things going on. One being Austin Cedric not making it to the final round of 12, but also Corey LaJoy on his final lap of qualifying was awaited at the start and finish line by a pace truck, something we have never seen before in qualifying because we really don't have qualifying anymore. But it was really funny to see that happen. But round two began, and we saw Chase Briscoe from Mitchell, Indiana, put down a great lap, but William Byron from Team Hendrick put on a better lap, and Byron got the pole, and Chase Briscoe was to his outside. So that was setting up an interesting start to the race because you got two young drivers at a new track layout i guess you could say and you do not know what's going to happen do they miss the shift or do they spin the tires or do they overshoot a uh, corner and cause a big pileup i don't know but it was something to keep an eye on and when they restarted or started the race to be exact uh, both of them drivers did a really good job they held their own line and they them and uh, chase elliott and kyle larson actually ran away from the field I think it was about a seven, six second gap between the fifth place car and them, but it was pretty cool to see that happen. But on lap two, William Byron overshot, turned seven, I think it was, and that's when Chase Briscoe got by him. And then Briscoe led 11 laps, and then he pitted, and then Byron pitted, and Elliott and Larson, they all came in with him. And that's when we saw Tyler Reddick winning stage one over Michael McDowell. Stage two happened. Chase Briscoe, who was supposed to be the leader when everything cycled out, had a penalty because he turned off his motor and it did not want to start back up as soon as he was wanting it to. And he lost a couple positions that he could not gain back. So he was restarting in the sixth position right in front of Joey Logano. A heartbreaker there because track position was pretty key. It was kind of hard to pass at some parts of the track. So. And Saturday's race, the Xfinity race, we saw some passing here and there, but the cup race, it was a lot more tighter. And Briscoe had his work cut out for him. And then he just kept on going backwards. And then the leaders pitted at the end of stage two, it, obviously because they're going for the win. And that's when we saw Tyler Reddick racing for the stage win alongside his teammate Austin Dillon. But Reddick eventually got the green checkered flag. And then stage three started, and we saw Kyle Larson put on a clinic, and he ran away with it. He had about a four-second lead, and eventually a caution came out for a splitter, or a spl yeah, a splitter on a racetrack, and uh, NASCAR had to throw the caution out, and they picked it up, and they gave it to Winval2088, a YouTuber, and I thought it was pretty cool. Uh, but the caution came out, and the leaders pitted, and we went, that's when we saw Denny Hamlin, Kurt Busch, Matt DiBendetto and Chase Briscoe staying out and collecting the first four spots. And when they restarted, all of them drivers pretty much held their own. They had a pretty good restart, if you ask me. But Briscoe had a really good one. And he went down into turn one, gained a couple positions. Kyle Larson was with him. And the first time around on a backstretch, Martin Truex Jr. spun out. And NASCAR did not throw the caution, which blew my mind because debris was everywhere. But they continued on, and the next time around on a backstretch, that's when we saw a big pileup happen. Joey Logano, Kyle Busch, William Byron, Daniel Suarez, Ryan Priest, and a lot more drivers to be involved, uh, Kevin Harvick. But it was something I have never seen before 
a part of the track coming up and causing a major pileup. That has happened in the past, but not while I was watching a NASCAR race. I was too young and not even born yet to see something like that happen. But it happened at Indianapolis. NASCAR threw the red flag out and they took the whole turtle or bump, if you will, away from the track and they just left it open. But they did leave that one spot open, which they call it a ramp because the car goes over it. They're going about 10 feet up in the air. So next time they restarted, the next time by, Michael McDowell hit the ramp and he got up into the air and caused a big wreck. Austin Dillon, Tyler Reddick, and so on. Eric Jones, I think, was involved, but he didn't get that much damage. But man, that was crazy. And then NASCAR threw the caution. And then they restarted again, going down in a turn one. Denny Hamlin, Chase Briscoe, AJ Allmendinger. Briscoe went through the grass, came back into the lead. NASCAR gave him a black flag, telling him to stop, but he did not. He wasn't told properly on the radio, in my opinion. And he wrecked the 11 as soon as he got by him for the win, in his opinion, and like in his own like perspective, he wrecked him. He thought he was going for the win, which you cannot blame a driver for doing so. And uh, he eventually got past Hamlin and went down in the turn 10, and he locked up the brakes and it ended his chances of winning. But if I would chase Briscoe in that situation, yeah, I would have wrecked the 11 car of Denny Hamlin. But also, I would have kept on going. I would have raced to the checkered flag because once he raced to it, anything can go on. Maybe, I don't know, a protest, if you will, in the garage, because that was something to keep your eye on because he was forced into the grass. It's not like he drove through it on purpose, but it was something to keep an eye on. Maybe they protest, uh, but they did not. Uh, but your winner was AJ Allmendinger in the 16 car for college racing. Runner up to him was the 12 car of young Ryan Blaney. Third place was Kyle Larson. Fourth place was Chase Elliott and Chase Elliott. I thought he had a good shot of winning until that last pit stop happened. His crew, on the right side, uh, they dropped the jack down and the tire was not on properly and no lug nuts were even on it. So it was a sketchy deal. They had a jacket back up and uh, Elliot lost a ton of positions on pit road, but he still managed to finish fourth. And rounding out your top five was the 21 car of Matt DiBendetto. A great run for him because DiBendetto did not have a perfect car. And what I mean by that is his car was not perfectly clean without a dent. He had so much damage to that car and still managed to finish in the fifth position at a road course. And the Dibendetto is not known for as a great road racer. So it kind of blew my mind and caught my attention, but great job for him as he's racing for his career and future in NASCAR for the rest of the season. And uh, something to keep your eye on there. Driver of the week has to go to AJ Allmendinger. He won as a part-time driver and team. Wow, you do not see that happen all the time. But now let's talk about Michigan. This Sunday, the NASCAR Cup Series heads out to Michigan to race in a 400-mile race. And it's going to be very exciting because there's a lot of storylines that have came from this past weekend's race at Indianapolis. One being Chase Briscoe and Denny Hamlin, that incident right there. But also seeing Kevin Harvick struggle and uh, him and Tyler Reddick are the only two left because Denny Hamlin locked up a playoff spot mathematically. So it's going to get really sketchy here. Kevin Harvick is plus 94 to the good, and Tyler Reddick is plus like 15 or something like that. So none of them drivers are feeling too comfortable, but Kevin Harvick can lock a playoff spot this weekend if one he wins or someone that's already won wins or a part-timer wins, which I highly doubt will happen at Michigan, but we've seen it this past weekend at Indianapolis. But uh, talking about that there, I expect the three and eight and pretty much the four car to be going after points. They would not be going for the win. And while everyone else pits possibly at the end of a stage, say a caution were to come out, they would stay out and collect them points instead of pitting because points are more valuable than winning to them because they're trying to lock themselves in and Harvick can do that without winning Sunday too. He just got to get some solid points and has someone else has already won this year win again. And, uh, you got some great drivers. Our high favorites are drivers that have already won this year. Kyle Larson, Denny Hamlin, Martin Truex Jr., and Chase Elliott. But we'll see how things go there. But my top five, like I said, though, is pretty much based off of facts and odds, to be exact. And Denny Hamlin, I think, will win this race. Hamlin, these past two years at Indianapolis, where they raced out last week, has wrecked from the league. 
a heartbreaker. But he's always managed to come back better than ever. And I think he will do that this Sunday at Michigan, winning his first race of the 2021 season. Finishing runner-up to him will be Kyle Larson. Now, a lot of people might be saying, why is Kyle Larson your runner-up? Larson has won here in the past multiple times. Well, I just think Hamlin had a little more motivation than Larson. He was wrecked from the lead, and he is winless still. So Hamlin will get the checkered flag, and Kyle Larson will follow suit in the second position. Third place will be the 19 car of Martin Truex Jr. Fourth place will be Kevin Harvick. And fifth place will be Chase Elliott. And my dark horse, I'm going to have to give it to him, Chase Briscoe. Chase Briscoe did one heck of a job this past weekend at Indianapolis. Yes, he was caught up in some controversy after the race. But you know what? I think that's going to build up some fire inside of him and that whole team at Stuart Haas. They might go and win this thing at Michigan. Briscoe runs really good here at Michigan in the past. Trucks, Xfinity. So keep your eye on Briscoe. He might not win, like I said, in weeks past at what I'm talking about, the Dark Horse. But a top 10 will probably happen. But we're going to see. Time will tell there. But winning, Hamlin, Larson second, third, Truex, fourth, uh, Harvick, and fifth, Elliott. And with Harvick finishing fourth, he'll lock a playoff spot. And then Briscoe, my dark horse. But everybody, though, remember to please like and subscribe and check out Winning Bets, JB Racing News Reviews, and Righteous Rednecks.